and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you live from beautiful Budapest, quite close to the Danube River. I hope everybody had a great weekend and their week is off to a fantastic start. I know mine is. Hi, Happy Singh. Hi, Violet Nguyen, Abdul Aziz. Good to see many of you joining in on this class. Hi, Juka. In this class, we will be focusing on the speaking section, specifically practicing part one. So make sure to speak and repeat. Speak, repeat throughout the class. And again, these lessons are brought to you by our premium IELTS preparation web portals for academic IELTS. Check us out at aehelp.com. That's academicenglishhelp.com. And for the general IELTS, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. Dot com on both of those websites. Uh, we have six original practice exams with four more coming next year and over 100 hours of video lessons in a fully interactive course. As well, you can download our apps, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help, which you can now search and find on your Google Play and Apple app stores. Once you have downloaded the apps, you can link them to your web accounts for the ultimate IELTS learning experience. Basically, that means you can learn from the website, you can learn from the app, access the same account. Super cool. We're super excited about it and we're going to be bringing you more and more fantastic updates. So definitely check those out. Hi, I'm a the doc. I'm a the doc. Hi, Amarjeet. Hi, Roshni. Good to see our members in the class. Hi, members. Students, just real quick while we wait for a few more students, this is what our academic website looks like here, aehelp.com with the blue background. Click that big red button to join. And to join the premium package at gieltshelp.com, click that big red button. Look for that green background there. All right, everyone, if you have questions about the exam or our products, just send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. All right, let's get into a little bit of the schedule. So here is the live schedule for this week. Classes are 13.30 to 14.30 for members chat and all chat 15 to 16 o'clock. Today, kicking this week off with speaking part one and then uh, going to task one tomorrow for members followed by task two for everyone. Just a moment, it looks like YouTube is having a little bit of an issue. All right. Just bear with me one moment if you can hear me. Not what, sure why studio just bugged out on me, but Anyhow, all right, can everybody hear me, see me okay still as we get into our speaking uh, section? YouTube was having a bit of a, an issue. I had to restart the chat. Nima Tula says it's okay. Fantastic. Yaoundin Kim says, I'm going to take the IELTS test this Saturday. I'm so nervous right now. Yaoundin Kim it's okay to be a little bit nervous. Don't be too nervous. You'll do fine. Good luck on your exam Saturday. Thank you students for confirming that all is well. Okay, everyone, let's warm up with a little bit of speaking, just the meet and greet. Uh, again, the speaking interview 
is roughly 12 to 15 minutes maximum. And it's the same for the computer-based, paper-based exams. You sit face-to-face -face with either a native speaker, English speaker usually, or a very, very, very high-level non-native speaker. Uh, that's sometimes possible also. And when you walk into the exam room, stay calm. You paid to be there. Do your best. They're doing their job. You're there to do your job. Uh, they'll start off with uh, a question like, what is your full name? Sometimes they'll ask for your ID first. Sometimes they'll ask for your full name first. Doesn't matter. Don't let that confuse you. So what is your full name? Give me a nice answer to that. It's always a good question to practice. So you sound natural, fluent, right off the bat. It means right away you sound confident and natural. So what is your full name? Awaz says, my full name is Awaz Ahmedov, but most people call me by my Brazilian nickname, which is Ed. Please do the same. Awaz, really nice. I like how you switched that up from before. And that's a very natural, uh, complete, clear response. So good job, Awaz. Uh, Nima Tula says, is it good to um, face with a native examiner or somebody who speaks a second language? Nima Tula, it doesn't matter. Your examiner will be very professional, regardless of whether they're native or a second language speaker. So just do your best, okay? Ferdovs says, Nabyev, my full name is Ferdovs Nabyev. You can call me by my first name, Ferdovs. Nice, nice and fluent, Ferdovs. Good job. All right. Rupesh is looking for friends to practice speaking with. So if anybody wants a speaking partner, Rupesh Panalia just said they're looking for one. Uh, Bopin Thapa says, my name is Bopin Pahadur Thapa but just call me Bopin. Okay, that works. Shaknoza Avezova says, my full name is Avezova Shaknoza. Please call me by my given name, which is, which is that Shaknova? I'm, I'm not Slavic, so I don't know what your given name is. You might want to state that, okay, very clearly. You, you might want to state, call me by my given name, uh, Shaksnoza, okay? I'm guessing. All right, um, those are some good answers. So uh, my uh, family name is Sanders and my given name is uh, Frederick. Uh, please just call me Fred for short. Okay, so there's another kind of way to express this. Uh, your family name, another way to say that is surname. Americans like to say family name. British like to say surname. Canadians say both. Uh, so just repeat after me. What is your full name? My family name is Sanders and my given name is Frederick. Please just call me Fred for short. All right, next question. May I see your identification? So give me a nice response to this. These are the first questions the examiner asks you because they're instructed to do so. So they might ask for your identification first, then your name, or your name, then your identification. But those will be the first two questions. Pachu Yadav says, Yes, of course, here you are. Happy Singh says, yes, here is my passport. There you are. Ferdov says, absolutely, here you are. Yondin Kim says, sure, here you are. UC Sports, absolutely, here it is. Again, students, as I say these phrases, make sure to speak and repeat. So copy my intonation, my enunciation as close as possible. Okay. Uh, Nabil says, sure, here is my passport. Sushine says, yes, sure, here you are. Okay. And again, make sure that you bring the same identification with you that you used to register. 
So uh, an answer will be like, uh, definitely. Here is my passport. This is the ID I used to register for the exam. Please have a look. You will note that I also have a middle name, David. All right, so I'm being a little bit creative here. And you should do the same whenever you can. Don't over speak, but be expressive. Okay, so find that happy balance. And this is a um, qualitative piece of advice that I'm giving you here. Nevertheless, think about this as you practice and uh, get ready for the exam. So don't over speak, but do be expressive. Okay, and here's an example of that expressiveness. So not over speaking, but being expressive. Uh, repeat after me. May I see your identification? Definitely. Here's my passport. This is the ID I used to register for the exam. Please have a look. You will note that I also have a middle name, David. Okay. Uh, definitely if your introductory name, okay, so the name you use to introduce yourself should match the name in your passport. So if this question comes first, what is your name? Say the name that you have in your passport. Otherwise, you might have to clarify yourself why you're using a different name than what's on your ID. And that could be a bit awkward, so be careful. Okay. All right. Now, the next question. Where do you live? Okay. It's a common question. So I will record this for marking purposes, and I will ask you a couple questions to get to know you better give you instructions for each part of the exam. Where do you live? Okay. Happy, si Happy Singh says, I live on 2nd Street, house number 12 in the village of Faini, which is in District 17, Moga, or in the 17th District. Happy. Okay. Yoon Din says, well, I'm currently living in the suburb of the capital city, which is quite a tranquil village. That's a little bit confusing. Capital city, tranquil village. Not sure what you're meaning to say there, Yoon Din. So you need to be a little bit more clear. Okay. UC Sport says, I'm living in this town and uh, in the suburban area of... My city is famous for temples in the way of speaking. Uh, UC Sports, um, the question is not asking what your city is famous for. So that would be an example of over-speaking, okay? Being expressive and over-speaking, one of the big differences is over-speaking, you go off topic. Being expressive, you're on topic. So keep that in mind, students. If you start explaining what your city is famous for, that would be over-speaking. Nobody's asking you that question, okay? So over-speaking means you go off topic. Like, for example, the reasons my city is famous. Nobody asked you that, so don't answer questions the examiner is not asking you. Being expressive means you stay on topic and give clear details, explanations, and at times, examples. Okay, so that's the difference between expressive and over-speaking. Uh, let's see some more answers here. Sushine says, I reside in Rud uh, Rudrapur. which is the capital city of India, as you may know, and it is situated in the northern area of Uttarakhand state. All right, Sushine. Um, Roshni says, I live in downtown Nagpur, India, which is exactly located in the middle of the Indian Peninsula and also known as the second capital of Maharashtra. Okay, I'm still looking for... 
a nice, precise, expressive answer. I've mentioned in the past how students should answer this where do you live question. There are two parts to answering this question well. Uh, Januka says, well, I live in a small town called Dahran, which is situated in the western part of Nepal, and it has a lot of beautiful places to visit. Januka, careful with that over speaking. Okay. I'm surprised nobody actually uh, mentioned their uh, shelter, their actual physical um, building where they live. I'm looking for that. Awaz seems to have answered that. Awaz says, well, I live in a huge flat with four rooms, which is situated in downtown Navai. Um, there's a bathroom, living room, wide bedroom, and like an office where I do my projects. Um, okay, Awaz, that's good. So you got both parts of the question or the answer. Just careful not to overspeak. You're detailing uh, your house a bit too much. Uh, Murasa says, I live on the fifth floor of a city tower with my parents. It has three bedrooms um, and it is located in the center of Islamabad, uh, just behind the famous flower tower. Okay, Murasa, I corrected a little bit, but otherwise very nice. Okay, so where do you live? Two parts, the city and your actual physical shelter. Okay, so I live on the fourth floor of an apartment building in a two-bedroom flat with my wife and daughter in the heart of Budapest, which is the capital of Hungary. All right, so that would be your high band answer. It's a complex sentence using an adjective clause and it's very expressive, okay? I'm on topic throughout. So every element, every part of this answer is clearly in connection to where do you live? It's not about what is your city famous for or um, where do you study or do your work in your home? So you really have to find that balance of not going off topic, but being really expressive. Okay, repeat after me. So I live on the fourth floor of an apartment building in a two bedroom flat with my wife and daughter in the heart of Budapest, which is the capital of Hungary. All right. So far, so good. Here we go. Next question. What do you like about your home? Okay, so again, these are the warm up questions that the examiner is asking to make you feel comfortable. So, what do you like about your home? Awaz says, Awaz Ahmedov says, Well, my home is situated on the fourth floor, so it has great views by the lake. Whenever I look out the window, I feel relaxed. Okay, and it was, use the question in your answers. Okay, so I really enjoy that my home is situated on the fourth floor, so it has great views of the lake. Okay, use the question, students, in your answers. All right, paraphrase and use the question. Rodrigo uh, Silva says, I love my home because it's cold. My city is around 34 Celsius daily, um, and uh, my home is nice and cool because of the uh, materials used, and it's north-facing. Also, I have a barbecue for the weekends, um, that I fire up when friends come over to visit. As well, it's near the city center, so it's very convenient to do shopping and run my errands. Okay, Rodrigo, I went into a little bit more detail there. Um, watch your clarity, okay? Uh, don't um, say too many points, Rodrigo. Instead, take one point and elaborate. 
So if you like your apartment, Rodrigo, because it's cool, we would naturally say in English that I like my apartment because it's cool, not cold, cool. Cool is comfortable. Cold is, ooh, I'm feeling cold, okay? So then focus on that aspect, Rodrigo. So say, I really like that my apartment is cool. Even though my city is around 34 Celsius on average, since my apartment is north facing and built of concrete and steel, it's nice and cool even on these hot days. Okay, Rodrigo, that will get you that high band score, being able to go into that detail. Good answers, students. Those are some good answers. I like, Rodrigo, how that was original, right? Dinara Ibrox uh, Imova says, I live on the third floor of an apartment with my family in Al Malik, which is located in the Tashkent uh, region of Uzbekistan. Nice, Dinara. All right. Jyoti Takur says, I like the architecture of my home, uh, which is designed by my own choice. I used a lot of smooth round shapes to give it um, a beautiful appearance. All right, Jyoti, explain what is that architecture that you chose that's so beautiful? Okay. And he says it has a well ventilated space um, for. Uh, getting together with friends and enjoying a comfortable atmosphere. All right, that's good. So, well, as I had just said, my home is very central. So it is conveniently located for uh, shopping and running errands. This is what I enjoy the most as it allows me to save a lot of time which I can then spend with my family. All right. So uh, making connections among your answers uh, notice how here, where do I live? I said that I live in the heart of Budapest. Now I'm paraphrasing this idiomatic expression, band eight, band nine, band descriptors say that candidates can effectively use idiomatic expressions. It doesn't mean using idioms, careful, using idioms can be very tricky, but simple idiomatic expressions like in the heart of Budapest, meaning the center of the city, and then making a connection. Well, as I had just said, my home is very central, so it is conveniently located for shopping and running errands. Running errands means going to the post office, going to the bank, going grocery shopping. This is what I enjoy the most as it allows me to save a lot of time, which I can then spend with my family. So again, using the question, this is what I enjoy the most. All right. So make sure to connect your responses as much as possible. That imp improves your coherence score. So here's a couple more tips. Okay. Use idiomatic expressions, but not necessarily, or not necessarily difficult idiom phrases. Okay, so idiomatic expressions does not mean that you have to use these really tricky idioms, all right? Um, so you can keep it simpler. Phrasal verbs are considered idiomatic expressions, okay? Uh, to increase your score, all right? Now the next tip is make sure to connect ideas among your responses when possible, as this too 
will enhance your overall band score. All right. So I see a lot of other good answers there. Yes, Kapil, it's absolutely important to use idiomatic expressions properly. Uh, if you make a mistake using idioms, it really drops your score. It's very confusing. So avoid that at all costs. Okay. All right. So once you're done with the formalities, the introduction, then uh, you can get to uh, your part one general question. So the examiner will introduce the topic. So they'll say something like, okay, um, let's talk about jewelry. All right. And as soon as you hear that, so as soon as you hear the topic of part one, you should quickly run a search or a scan through your head and think of as many words as possible. Pay attention to that first question um, and uh, associate what comes to mind when you hear the word jewelry. So when you hear this word jewelry, students, what other words immediately come to mind? And some of you might be thinking, I don't know about jewelry or I don't know. No, 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 focus. We all know about jewelry. It's common to most of our cultures and our lives. You have to be able to uh, come up with some thoughts. So Hikmatillo says, well, immediately I think of earrings. Yeah, earrings, good. Uh, Bumi says accessories, good. Yeah, a lot of accessories are jewelry, absolutely. Uh, Hassan, Sadiq, good to see Hassan, uh, says ring. And I think Hassan, the second word instead of uh, nickel, nickels is necklaces. Um, N.A. says bangles. Bangles are, is a type of bracelet, yeah. So uh, bracelet. Bracelet. Um, rings. Necklace, right? It's neck. Lace, necklace, okay, it's good. What else? Other than ornaments, necklace, what else? Uh, Jabahir says adorn, decorate, ornament, embellish, beautiful. Yeah, so other words, right? Not just the nouns, but words like beautiful, uh, sparkle, right? Shine, okay, those are all really good embellish uh, rodrigo silva very good rodrigo says watch i was wondering when somebody would come up with that a watch can be a piece of jewelry absolutely if you have a nice gold rolex that's not just a watch it's also taylor reese says bling very nice it's some slang bling is slang and it's commonly uh, heard these days so your examiner would know what you're referring to um, a bling sure um, gold silver expensive okay memory wedding anniversary Birthday, so those occasions when you get these kinds of jewelry or gifts. Absolutely. Investment, maybe. Some people invest money into jewelry. So all of these are possible. So when you hear that word, don't think, oh, I don't like jewelry. I don't wear jewelry. I hate jewelry. I'm not talking about this. Uh, don't think that way, okay? The goal in the IELTS exam is not to express your true feelings, your love or your hate for certain items or topic is to show your band score. It's to show your English fluency. So stay focused. Okay. Stay focused. So all of those words are coming to mind. Here we go. First question, students, do you like to wear jewelry, a ring or a necklace? Okay. Yeah, so do you like to wear jewelry, like a ring or a necklace? Now, you should always be giving an answer, explanation, 
example, right? Hikmatillo, no, a watch can absolutely be a piece of jewelry, especially if you explain that it's a gold watch, it's shiny, it's fancy. Uh, for Dobbs says, I love all shiny metals. In fact, I always wear a beautiful golden ring on my right third finger, which marks that I'm married, which shows that I'm married. Yeah, absolutely. For dogs, very nice. Okay, good. Um, it's actually your ring finger. So students remember thumb, pointer or index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. Okay, so pinky, ring, it's actually called your ring finger, middle finger, pointer or index finger, and thumb, all right? Sparkly, good. Uh, Hassan says, frankly, I don't like wearing jewelry because I feel it suits women rather than men. I have a nice necklace uh, that I got for my last birthday uh, and I gave it to my younger brother who is fond of these items. Okay, Hassan, good. All right, it works. Just careful with your word choice on a couple of those words. All right, uh, Murasa says, when it comes to jewelry, rings are my number one choice. Rings uh, help me look pretty and uh, attract others, especially during lectures in the classroom when I move my hands up and down on the board um, and catch the attention of others, Marasa. So when it comes to jewelry, rings are my number one choice. Uh, rings enhance my looks. They make me more pretty and catch people's attention especially when I move my hands up and down the board during lectures in class. All right, it's a very comprehensive answer, Marasa. Quite good. Notice my corrections. All right. Yaoundin Dean Kim says, since I'm a student, I don't have uh, chances to wear jewelry. But I do adore accessories like bracelets and rings because they embellish my outfit or they complement. Another one, word that you could use is they complement my outfit and help me to look more glamorous. Hadi Epek says, although I'm not all that into jewelry, I always have my wedding ring on my finger. It is not only a beautiful accessory, but also shows my loyalty to my wife. Absolutely, Huddy. Very nice. Okay. Again, some real time corrections there. Take note of those students. NA says, yes, I absolutely like to wear uh, smart and light jewelry. I'm currently in love with this gold bracelet that I'm wearing on my right wrist. I also have a knack for sparkly rings. You don't need to say finger rings, just rings any. All right, good, good job. Keep going, students. Keep using that vocabulary, all right? Kapil, please keep it to English as there are people from many parts of the world in this class and in the chat, okay? Uh, Aster Rihani says, I love jewelry and I love uh, wearing jewelry to match my outfits, but saying that I'm very, uh, but I must say that I am very picky as they have to be simple and classy. All right, good. Uh, Roshni says, yes, absolutely. I love to wear bling, um, especially bling, which is funky and shiny uh, for parties because it gives me a different look than others and I also feel more confident. Fair enough, Roshni. Yeah, jewelry does help boost confidence. It's a bit of an ego drive. Absolutely. Good. Uh, Rodrigo Silva says, honestly, I don't like to wear jewelry um, mostly because I'm allergic to a lot of metals. They cause a rash on my skin. 
Um, so I prefer uh, fabrics and clothes to make me look glamorous. All right, Rodrigo, again, careful not to go off topic with that. Okay. Let's see. BP says, I like to wear jewelry such as a ring or gold chain for family functions. I do have different types of rings made of platinum and gold, but bloodstone ring is my favorite. BP, I think you're talking about a ruby. The ruby is the bloodstone, I believe. All right. Good job, students. So some good answers there. Yes, I absolutely uh, like to adore my body with uh, jewelry, especially if I'm going out to a business meeting or a party because I feel that it projects my confidence and makes me look good. I always wear my gold chain and bracelet when I go to such functions. All right. So again, answer, explain, example. Um, yes, I absolutely like to adore my body with jewelry, especially if I'm going out to a business meeting or a party because I feel that it projects my confidence and makes me look good. I always wear my gold chain and bracelet when I go to such functions. Uh, students, make sure you're speaking and repeating, not just the answers that I'm giving you, but also the questions. It's really important to practice questions as well as answers, okay? So, uh, Jabber here is asking, can we talk about only a ring or a necklace for this question, or can we talk about like a watch? If your watch is glamorous, like it's a nice gold or silver watch, or if it's a fashion watch, uh, as there are many these days, those big watches that people wear, that would be considered jewelry. Okay, it's functional jewelry. A watch is functional jewelry, absolutely. All right. Okay, uh, next question, students. Uh, what is your favorite type of jewelry? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for that. What is your favorite type of jewelry. For Dobbs says, as I mentioned earlier, I love uh, rings uh, which are designed and made in Turkey as they are made with some aesthetic elements and high quality gold. By the way, they are very expensive and not affordable for many people. All right, for Dobbs, again, don't go off topic for Dobbs. The price and the cost, that's a little bit going on the whim, okay? Awaz says, well, my favorite type of jewelry are gold items such as watches, necklaces, and rings, not only because they are quite expensive, um, but they look superb with fashionable clothes, especially with suits. Okay, well, that's very good. Hikmatillo says, as I mentioned before, the, my favorite jewelry uh, is my gold watch because I have always been quite keen on wearing them since my teenage years. Probably, maybe not as a child, but who knows, Hikmatillo. All right. Um... N.A. says, my favorite is lightweight gold jewelry, especially rings and bracelets, as I am allergic to most all other metals. Though gold is a costly metal, it, it has an eternal luster that I adore. 
Uh, students, uh, gold doesn't just shine. It has what's called luster. Luster, the word. Okay. A little bit of vocabulary there for you. So gold has luster. It's a special word for that kind of unique shine that gold has. All right. Um, Hassan says, if I have to choose a particular jewelry, I would choose a watch because it is an inseparable part of my hand um, and it's functional. I just purchased a fabulous chronograph watch the other day and I wear it even to bed. All right, Hassan. Uh, good answer. Colored it for you a little bit. All right. Let's see some more answers here. Olusegun Olatinpo says, my favorite type of jewelry is a wristwatch as it serves a dual purpose. It's both fashion and to check time. Uh, favorably, I prefer gold tinted wristwatches. Uh, Olusegun, very good, right? So my favorite kind of jewelry is a gold wristwatch. Not only because it is functional and shows the time, but also because it is elegant and looks great with a suit. In fact, I'm wearing my gold Rolex right now. All right. <laughs> so I wish, I do, I dream. Um, I wish I had a gold Rolex. I don't. That's out of my category. But anyway, maybe one day. Um, here we go, students. So repeat after me. What is your favorite type of jewelry. My favorite kind of jewelry is a gold wristwatch, not only because it is functional and shows the time, but also because it is elegant and looks great with a suit. In fact, I'm wearing my gold Rolex right now. All right. So expressive, natural, full sentence, explanation, example. That's your goal, students. That's always your goal. Here we go. Next question. Where is a good place for you to buy jewelry? So where is a good place for you to buy jewelry? Give me a nice full sentence for this. Okay. Uh, Noel, you're asking me if it's okay to specify the properties of the material. Don't go off topic. Don't go into that unless you're being asked. Okay. <laughs> well, Taylor, I was being imaginative there and, uh, if you're not wearing the Rolex, you might not want to say that you're wearing a Rolex, okay? Taylor said, what if they ask to see the Rolex? Then say, oh, I can't show it to you. It's mine and mine alone. All right. Happy Singh says, due to the advancements in technology, I like to buy um, jewelry from Amazon, which saves me time. And I have a lot of choices. Also, they provide home delivery. All right, Happy Singh. So yeah, Amazon's getting a little bit into the jewelry business, I'm sure. Definitely. Marasa says, usually I purchase uh, personal ornaments from the city market, which is just two kilometers away. Ornaments and jewelry um, are not really great synonyms. Careful with that, students. Ornaments are usually for your home or for others. I mean, sometimes we intermix them, but jewelry is jewelry. There's not, not too many words um, that you can use to replace that. Okay. All right. Hassan says, the best place where I have always bought jewelry is an old antique shop in downtown. 
It has affordable prices and good quality. Fantastic, Hassan. Don't repeat your words. Jewelry is non-count. We don't say jewelries, I don't think. I'd have to double check that, but it's I only hear it as jewelry. Okay. Aziz Beck, Abduk Ayomov says, as I bear in my mind the best place to purchase jewelry are malls because they are usually safe and comfortable for people compared with markets that are less crowded. Aziz Beck, I'm not too clear on what you mean there. You'd have to explain that a little bit better. Okay. Kapil AC says, probably it could be the shop near my hometown, which is about five kilometers away. They give good discounts on jewelry and I have a good relationship with the shop owner. Uh, so I enjoy buying rings, watches, necklaces there. Okay, um, where is a good place to buy jewelry? For experienced shoppers, I think eBay is a good place to bid on jewelry and get some fantastic items such as rings and watches at a bargain price. However, if a person is not comfortable with this and worry about counterfeits, they should buy jewelry at the mall downtown. All right. So here's my answer. Is this a good answer? For experienced shoppers, I think eBay is a good place to bid on jewelry and get some fantastic items such as rings and watches at a bargain price. However, if a person is not comfortable with this and worry about counterfeits, they should buy jewelry at the mall downtown. So that's my answer. Is it a good answer? Students, is this a good answer to the question? What do you think? Is it suitable? Am I going to get a good band score or not? Hickmatillo says yes. AH says, yeah, it's okay. ER says yes. I'm sorry, students. I have to disagree and say, nah, it's not the best. Aster says no. Thung Yung says no. And Thung Yung and Aster are right because it says, where is a good place for you to buy jewelry? Be really careful with this, students. I kind of did this to bring your attention to this point. It's a very common mistake in part one. Part one focuses on you, the candidate. So you have to focus your answer on the right subject. Here, this is you are the subject of the question, okay? The subject must stay the same. Here, the subject, I changed it right away for experienced shoppers, okay? So it's not good. You have to make sure that the subject is the same in your answer as the question, okay? So if I change it like this, for experienced shoppers like myself, I think eBay is a good place to bid on jewelry and get some fantastic items such as rings, watches at a bargain price. In fact, I just bought a nice 14 carat
whatever, gold ring on eBay last week. Okay. So you have to focus your answer on the right subject. Keep that in mind, all right? So now watch the question and the answer. Now it's a good answer. Repeat after me. Where is a good place for you to buy jewelry? For experienced shoppers like myself, I think eBay is a good place to bid on jewelry and get some fantastic items such as rings and watches at a bargain price. In fact, I just bought a nice 14 karat gold ring on eBay last week for a hundred bucks. Okay, finish the example. All right, here we go. So students, one more question. Uh, if you could make a piece of jewelry, what would it be? All right, so if you could make a piece of jewelry, what would it be? Yes, Balraj, I love how you got that previous answer. Okay, RK, absolutely, same thing, good. All right, so if you could make a piece of jewelry, what would it be? Ferdov says, it's an interesting question. Give me a moment to think about it. Very nice, Ferdovs. Uh, if I could make a piece of jewelry, it would be a diamond ring for my wife, as my spouse loves shiny rings. Very good for Dobbs. Okay, very good. Awaz says, if I were able to make jewelry, I would definitely make a multifunctional watch from gold based on the latest technologies, and I think it would be popular. Yeah, Awaz, clever idea, like make a smart watch that's not your generic black kind of smart watch that a lot of smart watches are, but an actual gold smartwatch that's a smart idea i was i wonder if they exist those gold smartwatches or silver platinum smartwatches i'm sure they'd be very expensive but a super cool idea all right let's see murasa says i'd love to make an engagement ring if i had the chance just yesterday i watched a video on youtube which showed how to make a ring for a life partner with the help of nails, water, and a drill. You don't need to say machine, Marasa. Okay. All right. Krishna Thakkar says, I would love to make a bracelet. Probably I'll make one or two for my friends. I think it would be a wonderful present for birthdays and anniversaries. Yeah. So definitely if you need a moment to think, that's a great question. Uh, please allow me a moment to think about a good answer. Well, given the chance, to make some jewelry, I would love to create a beautiful three carat diamond ring for my wife because as the saying goes, Diamonds are a girl's best friend. And I'm sure my wife would be ecstatic to receive it as an anniversary gift. All right, so there's my answer. Uh, buying some time is a good idea for these kinds of questions. Repeat after me. If you could make a piece of jewelry, what would it be? That's a great question. Please allow me a moment to think about a good answer. 
Well, given the chance to make some jewelry, I would love to create a beautiful three carat diamond ring for my wife because as the saying goes, diamonds are a girl's best friend and I'm sure my wife would be ecstatic to receive it as an anniversary gift. All right, students, if you're not married, that's okay. I'm sure, Taylor, that you can come up with a different answer equally as good. Here are some more questions for you. Notice the present perfect. Have you ever got jewelry as a gift? If yes, what? Have you ever bought jewelry for another person? I will leave those two questions for you to answer on your own. You can record it in MP3 format on your phone or tablet, computer, and send it to me by email and I will gladly give you an estimate of your speaking band score based on those responses. Uh, my email is adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. Remember, students, join our premium IELTS preparation packages at aehelp.com and g-i-e-l-t-s help.com. G-i-e-l-t-s help.com looks like this. Click the big red button to join. aehelp.com looks like this. Click that big red button to join us there. And download, link our apps. Search for general IELTS help in your Google Play and uh, Apple App Store. Or for the academic, search for academic. I-E-L-T-S, help. Awaz, you are very, very welcome for Dobbs. You're welcome, Hikmatilla. Welcome, welcome, viewers, students, members. Um, you are awesome. Some great uh, interaction from a lot of students. I'm happy to have been here with you, teaching you, giving you some strategies. Uh, tomorrow, members, task one, I will post the assignment later today. And for everybody afterwards, task two. So tomorrow, focusing on the writing section. Hopefully, you will join me then. Have an awesome rest of your Wednesday. If it's coming to an end, then I wish you sweet dreams and much love from Budapest. Bye for now.